today, we're going to start the class with kind of a provocative thought. We're going to use discrimination in Tai Chi. Of course, discrimination has a horrible thought of unjust prejudice, you know, putting something down to raise something else up. But actually, discrimination has a very simple definition of, you know, the recognition and understanding of the difference between one thing or another. It's not just about prejudice. Discrimination is actually recognizing and understanding the difference. So this ties in with our principle number four, our essential number four, which I decided not to try to memorize it because I want to make sure we have all the important pieces of it. So let me read it to you. Number four, distinguish insubstantial and substantial. The theory of Tai Chi takes the distinction of substantial and insubstantial as the first principle, meaning the most important one. When all the weight of the body is on the right leg, the right leg is said to be substantial, while the left leg is empty. Distinguishing and noticing empty and full in the body's turning motions will allow conservation of strength, lightness, and agility. Without discernment of empty and full, one's steps will be sluggish and heavy and the stance unsteady. So that's a lot of D words in there, right? Distinguish, distinction, discernment, and discrimination. They're all talking about the same thing of just noticing the difference between empty and full and understanding how it affects your movement. But like the unjust prejudice side of the word discrimination, okay, we don't want to say one is better than the other. Insubstantial is less than substantial because that's not true at all. Just because it's empty, just because it's insubstantial, does not mean that it's insignificant. It just means you're going to use it in a different way. So substantial and insubstantial, let's figure out if we can really feel the difference in our body and feel why that makes a difference in our balance, in our lightness, in our ability to move with grace. Let me put my cheat sheet down. And the first thing I want to do is let's do some chi walking. As we do our chi walking, and, and we do it a lot, it might feel kind of rote. But this is where I want you to start to separate the idea of empty and full. That's why we do a lot of chi walking, because it's a great exercise to do just that. So stepping forward with that left, bring a little bit of weight onto the left, feel the weight rocking back. And now as you turn, remember it talked about the turning motions, our principle number three, our essential number three, relax the waist, let the Dantian lead. Now bring all the weight up onto that left. Feel how empty that right leg can be. And then choose to step forward. Bring a little bit of weight onto that right. Rocking back. Feel that weight shift. Bring all the weight onto the right. And with this insubstantial leg, you have the choice to step forward. You also have the choice to step to the side, bringing the weight over. You have the choice now to step backwards. You don't always have to move forward with your chi walking. In fact, that's a great way to practice is if you can really hone in on your substantial and insubstantial side, if you are truly substantial, truly rooted and grounded, and 
fully empty, this insubstantial side has a choice. Am I going to go forward? Am I going to go backwards? Am I going to go to the side? That's really what discrimination, distinction, distinguishing is all about, is giving your body the choice to move in any direction. So you can see that discrimination is not the harsh, unjust prejudice which takes away choice. The kind of distinguishing we're talking about actually gives you all the choice in the world of which way am I going to move? Which is the best choice for my body at this moment in time? Let's look at wave hands like clouds because it's not always about moving forwards, right? We just talked about sometimes I can move to the side. When we do our wave hands like clouds, remember last week we talked about letting the Dantian lead, the waist is the ruler. Bringing that Dantian over your base of support allows this leg to be completely empty, this right leg, so that it can step in. And then as you rotate, bringing your Dantian over the right side now, the left leg can lift and move. So that insubstantial leg is important because it's the one that's going to choose which way you're going to step. It's the one that's going to lead your movement. With wave hands like clouds, if we don't actually focus on insubstantial and substantial changes, it's really very easy just to plod through it, right? And remember the end of that statement of if you're not distinguishing between substantial and insubstantial, your feet will be sluggish and heavy and your stance unsteady. Um, that, that's the kind of movement where you're just kind of sliding your feet, or if you see people walking, you know, and they just kind of walk forward like that, they're not choosing to put their foot forward. They actually have to put their foot forward or they're going to fall. So that's an unsteady gait. That's not one that has the uh, option of moving either forwards or back or to the side. It doesn't have any choice. It's sluggish and unstable. So one thing to really practice, a great way to practice with wave hands like clouds, let me get my cones, is to force yourself to actually have to step over something where you can't simply step and step, right? It doesn't work. You actually have to understand your substantial and insubstantial. Whereas now if I lift, my left leg becomes empty, I have to step over that cone. Now I have to let my right leg become insubstantial so that I can lift it. Now my left has to be insubstantial so that I can lift. Now my right, lift. So I'm forcing the issue of, is this leg 100% insubstantial so it can move? Try that with something in your house. It doesn't have to be a big orange cone like this, just something that you have to step over that will force the issue of, am I really truly distinguishing between substantial and insubstantial in that very simple movement? Let's take repulse the monkey. With repulse the monkey, we're stepping backwards. In order to step backwards, this left foot has to become empty. It can't move if it's not insubstantial. So you have to step back and now the right leg becomes empty. Step and turn 
Remember how the essentials work together. Your Dantian is leading that turn, leading that motion. You are suspended from the crown of your head. You're containing your chest and your back. You're in a great posture, rooted and grounded. That way, this left leg becomes completely insubstantial and you're balanced as you step back. So one way to force the issue with Repulse the Monkey is lift that left leg and kick before you set, set it down behind you and turn, completing your Repulse the Monkey. So now let this right leg become completely empty, lift and kick, set it down and complete Repulse the Monkey. One more, lift that left leg and kick, and step back and complete the movement. So what I'm giving you are ways to practice distinguishing insubstantial and substantial. I've said this many times, you don't just go through the form. Let's practice individual pieces and then when we put those improved pieces together into the form, the form itself is improved. So now what are, I want to switch gears just a little bit. We're still going to be talking about substantial and insubstantial, but let's think about putting different pieces of the puzzle together in different ways. That's going to challenge your brain to be focused on where is my weight? Am I insubstantial? Am I substantial? Which leg can move? So let's put brush knee and pushing chi together. So if you have your weight on the right, you're holding the ball to the right. Step out with your left and do your brush knee. Stop here. You're thinking again about being suspended from the crown of your head. You're containing your chest, raising your back by letting your shoulders expand, leading from the Dantian. You're not leading from your hands. Holding that ball to the right, step out, brush knee. Feel that weight come slightly onto that left. It's not 100% substantial. My right leg still has some weight. But now as I rock back, I want you to bring that weight, feel that weight onto that right, and then rock forward and do pushing chi. Right, when we do the form and we do brush knee, we do it three times and we rock back, holding that ball, bringing that weight forward, stepping out into brush knee. One more, brush knee. But now what I'm asking you to do, instead of just going forward with brush knee three times, I want you to think about where your weight is. Step out, brush knee. Bring that weight back, then bring it forward into pushing chi. Now bring it back again, holding that ball, to the left, now bring all your weight onto that left and step forward with your right, choosing to step forward. Brush knee, rocking back, pushing chi. Now rocking back, holding that ball to the right, bring all the weight onto your right and choose to step forward, brush knee pushing chi. So that's a fun combination. And I guarantee if you lose focus, what's going to happen is you'll come out with brush knee, pushing chi, and then you'll just want to come right up onto that left and step out into brush knee again. But what I'm asking you to do is really focus on that weight shift, brush knee, Pushing chi, feeling that weight going forward and back. 
bring it back again before you let that left leg become 100% substantial and stepping out with your right. There's another combination that's a fun one to put together and that's part the wild horse's mane with wave hands like clouds. When we do part the wild horse's mane in the form, again, we go forward with three steps. We're used to, our body is used to stepping forward each time with our part the wild horse's mane. Now to really focus in on that weight shift, holding that ball to the right, step out left, part the wild horse's mane. You're gonna rock back just like you would holding the ball. Bring your weight 100% onto that left, just like you would if you were going into the next part, the wild horse's mane. But now you're going to choose to just step to the side and do wave hands like clouds. And then bring in your weight over to the right, stepping out, part the wild horse's mane. Rocking back, bringing the weight up onto that left, step out, wave hands like clouds. Feel that weight shift, feel that dantian moving over the one side to the other, even though you're not substantial and insubstantial. Now, holding the ball to the left, step out to the right, part the wild horse's mane. Rocking back, hold that ball, let all the weight come onto that right, but instead of stepping forward, step to the side and come into your wave hands like clouds. Putting two different movements together like that really makes you focus. You can't just let your body memory, your muscle memory take over. Let's do kick smash and box the ears into pheasant stands. So obviously with kicks, you are 100% substantial on one side, 100% insubstantial on the other. It has to be that way. This is where you can really see that your insubstantial side is not insignificant. This is the kick. Then you're choosing to go forward. You know, every time that insubstantial side chooses to move, that's when it's not insignificant. But it's also a kick. It can also be an aggressive movement. If you kick smash and box the ears now with that right, then rock back, bring the weight back to the left and come into your pheasant stance. Then bring your weight over to the right. Kick, smash, box the ears. Bring that weight back and come into pheasant stance. Bring the weight over to the left. Fully root, fully ground, let your columns be straight. Kick, smash, leading from the Dantian, box the ears. Bring your weight back, root through that left again and lift into pheasant stance. Now bring the weight over to the right, lift the left, kick, smash, box the ears. Bring your weight back and come into your pheasant stance. That's a great way to practice that one-legged balance that really is a, um, a difficult one for a lot of people. And thinking about all the pieces of balance, that's why we're talking about the essentials. They all work together to help you be more balanced in your movement. You have to be suspended from the crown of your head. You have to be containing your chest. Relax the waist. Remember, if you're all bound up, you can't be balanced. You have to actually relax through that movement, which allows your feet to be strong, to be rooted. And then you can easily come into that pheasant stance or kick, 
smash and box the ears. We're going to do the form in a minute, but I want to challenge you this week to come up with some different combinations, some different sequences of movements, because that's going to force you to understand where your weight is, to be distinguishing between substantial and insubstantial. Because if you think I'm going to kick with my left leg here, but yet I'm rooted through my left leg, that's impossible. I have to actually know when to switch so that I can lift that left leg. Let's do an example of what I'm trying to say. In the form, the third part, the wild horse's mane, goes into, as you step up with that right leg, bringing the weight to the right, tapping your left toe, coming into your white crane, spreads its wings. Then you complete those arm circles, and then you go into a brush knee left. So let's say we want to do the form. We've just done the third part, the wild horse's mane. But instead of stepping up and doing white crane, what we're going to do is part the wild horse's mane, bringing the weight up onto that left, we're going to lift, kick, smash, box the ears, come back, rooting through that left, lift into pheasant stands, then bringing that weight all the way over to the right, come into our brush knee left, just like we would in the form. So you've just inserted, instead of white crane spreads its wings, You've inserted kick, smash, and box the ears, and pheasant stands. So that challenges your brain, number one. It also challenges your body because your weight has to be on the right, the correct side in order to then move into brush knee left, which is the next movement in the form. So have some fun with that. Try different combinations and really start to use discrimination in your movement. Understanding, recognizing the difference between the two. One is not better than the other. Substantial, insubstantial are both important. But understanding, being able to distinguish, to make a distinction between those uh, insubstantial and substantial, empty and full, will help you move with more grace, more balance.